keep praying for my lovely wife that her hand get better. And I'm going to take care of her. Amen. Praise God. Let's give God praise. Amen. Amen. Won't God do it? Amen. Hallelujah. Listen, um, God is an awesome God. And uh, I'm going to call Pastor Charles on up here. So he's going to do his thing. You know, I believe everybody's standing to your feet if you come to receive something today. Hallelujah. I told him I like that outfit, but I can't fit it. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> I got one like him, but I, <laughs> I can't wear it like he wear it. <laughs> Amen. He come matching. I mean, when he come matching, he's matching head to toe. I got to ask my wife, is this good? Is this good, honey? Amen. You got to do that. Yes. I got to ask. Amen. I'm still trying to dress myself. Amen. But this brother right here, man, good Lord. Hallelujah. Let's give God praise for Pastor Charles Emery. Amen. Just in case the enemy try to mess with your mic, we'll leave that one right there. <laughs> Amen. I want to go to St. John chapter 3. As we were talking about beginning of the month, um, living in the overflow. Um, I was praying about this all week, and the Lord spoke in my spirit, the requirements to live in the overflow. The requirements to live in the overflow. So go to St. John chapter 3. Can you turn me down just a little bit? Just a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 And there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said to him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Amen? We all agree with that. Nicodemus said to him, Can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time to his mother's womb and be born? And Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which born of the flesh is flesh, that which born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said, th said unto thee, ye must be born again. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you for this moment to share your word, O oh God. We pray, O oh God, that move upon our hearts, O oh God, to convict us, to change, to become better stewards of the gospel of Jesus Christ cleanse our mind, cleanse our heart, oh God, that we surrender to your Lordship, your authority, and that so you would have your way, oh God, and we thank you in Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. All right, you may be seated. You may be seated. I only have a few minutes to do this because I have a lot that God gave me, but I can't give it all today. I'm going to do a little bit today and a little another time. Okay, so I have some points that God gave me as I was studying this week. Number one, he says, the requirement to be to live in the overflow, you gotta understand God's GPS system. God's GPS system, which is God's purpose solution. A brother said that this morning on the prayer line, it really blessed my spirit. So I gotta share that one. Because when you walk in God's purpose, his solution, he leads, he guides, and directs you in the path that he ordained for you to walk in, right? Jesus made it clear, you must be born again. So in order to even walk in the overflow or abide in the overflow or to camp out and settle in the overflow, you must, number one, be born again. Amen? So St. John chapter 3, verse 3 to 5. Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt confess in thy mouth the Lord Jesus shall believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Number one, you must be born again. Number two, you got to believe, right, that you can be born again. Amen. Anybody in the house today? Amen, lights. Hallelujah. 
Number three, love the Lord with all your heart. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 through 5. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 through 5. Hear, O Israel. We're talking about be born again, right? You're going to believe. You got to love the Lord your God with all your heart. You got to be able to hear the voice of God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. You know what he's talking about? This is Moses speaking to the children of Israel. God wants all of you. He don't want part of you. He wants the whole thing. He wants the whole package. All right? You go to a restaurant, you want the whole package. Go to a buffet, you want the whole package. I never see anybody go to a buffet just to get one thing off the buffet. All right? Because when you go to a buffet, you have your desire set on multiple things that you expect to see on the buffet. The Holy Ghost is saying today, you got to hear the voice of God speaking to you to compel you to come into his presence in order that you can love him. I can't love a God I don't know. I got to love the Lord my God with all my heart, with all my soul, mind. And we're talking about the mind. With all my strength, which is might. I cannot come to God and say, God, I love you. I, I just want to be in your presence, God. But I'm not giving him my whole self. I'm going to give him part of me. What happens when I give him part of me? He ain't hearing you. He's not going to listen to you. Because he listens to those who surrender. I say it on the prayer line all the time. We must learn to yield, surrender, and release ourselves into the will of God in order to receive healing and deliver in any area of your life in the overflow. See, healing is in the overflow. Everything that God has spoken to us, his children, is in his word, is in the contract. We have to get to the place where I have ears to hear what the Spirit says to the church. If I'm not listening, how can I hear God's voice? Think about it. I can't hear him. We must submit to God, resist the devil, and purify our hearts. Did you hear that? Submit to God, resist the devil, purify your hearts. James chapter 4, verse 7 through 8. James chapter 4, verse 7 through 8. It says, submit yourselves. Therefore, unto God. You hear that? Unto who? God. Unto the devil. To the flesh. To your emotions. To your feelings. To God. Resist the devil. The, I said something this morning which really blessed my spirit. Because we always want to talk about resist the devil. He'll flee from us. But we don't do the first part. God says in his word, submit yourself therefore unto God. So my heart, your might, your entire being must be submitted. That means I'm yielding my desire, everything I am, to your will, that you'll be glorified. God, have your way in me. So once I learn how to give up all that I am for his purpose, for his glory, then I can do the second part. I can resist the devil. He is not going to flee from you if you're not prayed up and standing your word and studying the word to get it in your spirit. God told Joshua, when Moses died, my servant is dead. He said, Moses, get yourself. He said, Moses, dad, now Joshua, get yourself together because you got to carry the mantle. You got to lead the children of Israel over to the promised land. So dry your tears, get yourself in order, get your mind right because there's a mandate on you to move forward. The third part says, draw nigh to who? God. But in order to resist the devil, I got to submit. 
if I submit, I can resist the devil, then I can draw nigh to God. Y'all hear how that work? I can draw nigh to God, and there's a promise he'll draw nigh to me. Then he goes and says, and cleanse your hands, ye sinners. Submit to God, resist the devil, purify your heart. So, cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Anybody know what double-minded is in here today? I'm going to tell you what it is. This is God gave it. It's so practical. It's so simple. The Holy Spirit begins to speak into your ear gate. He said, I want you to go and talk to that brother over there and tell him God loves him. All right? The enemy said, no, don't do that. He might not receive it. He might reject you. He might start talking about you. He might even curse you out for just saying anything about God. That's double-mindedness. Because I hear the Spirit of God saying to do something, but the flesh doubts what God said to do, so I don't do neither one. I don't submit to God. I don't resist the devil. I don't draw nigh to God. So I can't go speak and do what God said because I'm, I'm not walking in this cleansing. Ooh, Jesus. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners. So he's making known that in order to be purified, I have to identify the sin in my life. Did y'all hear that? We all got sin in us. We have strongholds. We got habits. We got issues. We got physical issues, spiritual issues, whatever it is, emotional issues. God says you got to identify the sin in your heart. In order for you to draw near to God, I got to come and say, God, this is all I have. Everything I am, I'm laying before you because I can't deal with it in my own strength because my strength is weak. I, I learned something this morning. When Paul, he sought the Lord three times, moved a thorn out of his flesh, he said, God, I need your help. Paul says, because of the surpassing revelation he received from God that was given to him, a messenger of Satan to buffet him. You know what that means, buffet? To beat you up. Say you want to beat you up. That's what he was talking about. And he says, I sought the Lord three times. And his response was, check this out. My grace is sufficient. <laughs> that blew my mind. My grace. Man, we talk about grace upon grace upon grace. The number 10 is grace. So God says, my grace is overflowing in abundance in your life. Because in your weakness, my strength is made perfect. Oh, glory to God. Preach myself happy on that one today. Then you got to deny yourself. Glory to God in the highest. I got to come to the place of denying myself to follow my flesh. That's what we're talking about. Mark chapter 8, verse 34, 35. It says, when he had called the people unto him with his disciples also, he said to them, whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it, but whosoever shall lose his life for my sake. And the gospels, you hear that? His sake in the gospel. He said the same shall save it. So my life is preserved in the obedience of denying myself to follow him. I cannot follow him if I got sin in my life that's preventing me from coming to him clean. God wants a clean vessel. He told Ezekiel, Ezekiel tell the children of Israel, I'm going to take off their stony heart. I'm going to purify, I'm going to perfect them for my name's sake. Not your name's sake, not your name's sake, but for his name's sake. Then he said, I'm going to give you a heart of flesh after my spirit. Isn't that something? God has a heart that follows according to the spirit he placed inside of every born again believer because he has to purify you in order for you to be filled. I cannot receive the filling of the Holy Spirit if I'm not denying myself of my fleshly endeavors and my own desires. Glory to God. Matthew chapter 5 or 6. It's a key verse God gave me this week. Blessed 
are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. Blessed, happy, fortunate is a person who claims Jesus Christ as Lord in their life do hunger. What's your passion today? What are you hungry for? You got people in here right now, they're probably thinking about the meal they're going to cook when they go home. They might ain't paying, they ain't paying attention right now because their mind is on something else. As soon as I leave out of this church, when I get home, I want to go bake a cake. I want to go give me a pie. I want to go make a, a best meal that I can do today. But my mind ain't on the word. I, I, my mind is on what I want to do for my flesh. But he said, blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. Because when you thirst after righteousness, my passion is to be satisfied because I have a hunger that only God can satisfy. He said, they shall be filled. There's a feeling that only God can satisfy. There's a joy only God can flood your heart with. There's a passion only God can put in you for the things of God in his righteousness. When you take off your filthy garment and allow yourself to be clothed in the Lord Jesus Christ, he does an exchange factor to change your thought life to have the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. So when I have the mind of Christ, glory to God, I don't mind thirsting for him. I don't mind hungry for him because I know he's going to satisfy me with good things. The word says he's going to cause me to live in the overflow, to abide in his word. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, bless the name. Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. Acts chapter 2, verse 1 to 4. It says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come. You hear that? You got to understand the story. Chapter 1. Jesus told disciples to tear in Jerusalem after the Holy Ghost come upon you. Chapter 2 comes about they're in a place gathered with other believers. It wasn't just the disciples. There were many folk, 124 plus more in that upper room waiting on the expectation of the move of God to fill their hearts with the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. It says that when the day of, fully, of, was full, of Pentecost was fully come, they were with one, all with one accord in one place. That's the key right there. When everybody in this house get on one accord, the vision going to be fulfilled. When everybody get on one accord with the same purpose, the same passion that the shepherd had for this house, God says it's going to manifest the vision to fulfill it in this season of his life. Glory to God. I tell you, when God began to speak, my mind be just going like a, like a wheel. Got so much to say and just can't tell it all. But I tell you one thing about it. It goes on a little further. Says, and, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven. <laughs> What's your sound today? You hear it? What are you listening to? What's driving you? What's your ambition today? What is it on inside of you that's motivating you? Say the Spirit of God. Are you hearing the sound of heaven? Glory to God. Oh, my God. It says, from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. He said the sound. He didn't say the spirit yet. He said it was a sound that filled the house. It says, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues of fire, like, like as a fire, and it set upon each of them. First, it was a sound. From the move of God. Then it was a manifestation of cloven tongues. That means the tongue of heaven began to speak to everybody's ear gate. They began to hear the Spirit of God begin to fall upon their hearts to inspire, to inspire them, to fill them up with the presence of God. And it says, and there appeared them like cloven tongues of fire, and it set upon each of them, and they all were filled. Not one person lacking in that upper room. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Glory to God. Acts chapter 13, verse 52. And the disciples were filled with joy and with the Holy Ghost. 
when you get to the place of an expectation of God to move into your life and your situation, there's a fire going to fall upon you like never before with a passion for the things of God. They're going to drive you to a higher place in God. They're going to cause the overflow to fall into your finance, call into your health. Everything you do for ministry, you're going to cause an overflow. Say it's the spirit of God because God says, i got to get you in that place where you have a higher elevation in the spirit, in your mindset. i got to draw you to a higher place in me that your desire and your passion begin to change from the things of the world begin to have a heart for God because when you fall out the God the spirit of God begin to overflow in your life that the fire we're going to move on the inside because something have to change inside of you the devil can't stop your passion he can't stop your dreams from being fulfilled he can't stop the calling of God upon your life you got to know for yourself that I am God and he is mine therefore I call upon the Lord until I get an answer I don't know about you. It's in the God of hope. Fill you all with joy and with peace in believing and that ye may abound in hope through the power of the Holy Ghost. God wants to fill you with such a joy like never before. The world didn't give it. The world can't take it away. This joy that I have, my Father gave it through the Holy Ghost. And I want to let you know, Dave, that when you have a joy on the inside, there's a fire burning on the inside. And the devil can't put out your fire. Pastor, the devil can't stop your fire. He can't handle your smoke. Because when you're coming forth like a hurricane, God said the spirit is moving in a fire. He's all consuming fire. He's burning up everything in your pathway. They try to hinder you from moving in your purpose. I place a desire inside of you. I put a passion inside of you that only you can fulfill when you connect to the Father. I come and encourage you today. You hold on to God's unchanging hand. Don't you give up in the midst of the storm. You're going to go through some troubles in life. But do not lose heart. For I have overcome the world. Because greater is in me than he that's in the world. I come to tell you today, you got the king of glory living inside of you. You got the all-powerful God working in your behalf. He silenced the voice of the enemy. I come to tell you today, hold on to God's unchanging hand. He never changes. He's the same today, yesterday, and forever. You hold on to God's unchanging hand. He promised me, I'll never leave you, nor will I forsake you. I'll never turn my back on you. If you let me lead you, I'll guide you to the promises. I'll guide you to your purpose. I guide you to my will. I know what you need before you utter a word from your mouth. I know your passion. I know what's on the inside of you that need to be purged out. I'm doing a work in you. I plead the blood of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus over everybody in this room. Because there's a cleansing in the blood of the Lamb. There's a power that can change your life. There's a power that can change your mind. I come to tell you today, if you hunger and thirst for righteousness, God promises he'll fill you. He said, I'll prepare a table before you're in the presence of your enemy. There are some enemies coming against you. But God said, I'll prepare a table. So you know one thing about that? If you didn't have a table, you wouldn't have no enemies. Because God says, I'll set you in the midst of your enemies. I'll cause a banquet at your table. Because his banquet is love. His bed over me is love. Everything I need is on the table. God says what you need, I'll supply. I'll repair a table in the presence of your enemy. Then he'll anoint your head with oil. And the oil will overflow. Glory to God. The oil will overflow at my table. When I sit down and dine with the king, 
causing my oil will begin to overflow because he got to fill you up in order for it to come out of you. He got to fill you up so it can come out of you. Somebody needs your anointing. Somebody needs your power. But you got to surrender. Oh, my God. That ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord. So walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him, and established in the faith, as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. Anybody in the house got a thankful heart? He said, You're going to abound with thanksgiving. So not sometime, not when you feel like it, but all the time. Because he got you rooted. You're grounded. You're settled. You're established in him. Everything you need, the I am says, I am with you. 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 He said, everything you need, when you connect to me, I begin to pour into your life. Everything you need, I'll cause an abundance of rain that you receive wheat and oil and wine. The wine was for the refreshing the oil for the cleansing and for the power of God to elevate you. God says, will you connect to me? I'll cause an overflow that you'll find your storehouses being filled with everything you need, Pastor Nathaniel. God says, I'm going to fill your storehouse like never before. So the thing you've been praying for, been trusting me to do in your life, so there's an overflow coming in your direction. He because y'all connected. He said, there's abundance. It's going to be double fold because y'all connected. So keep on expecting. Keep expecting God to move. He said, you give to me. Savior. There's a man named Nicodemus. I just read about. He 
hand of Jesus. And he came by night secretively. Because he was a Pharisee. And he knew if anyone saw him, he would have been slandered. So he came in the opportunity of the moment of the night when Jesus was expecting him. So let you be born in the spirit of the world. Also, there's, there's a smaller truck behind that truck. Behind that truck. What it does, say, for instance, turn this way, Charles. This truck is riding behind the big truck because when that wide truck begin to make a turn, it'll get in the other lane to block cars from coming around because that truck needs all the space it can take to make that turn. God said, I'm going to take all the space up. Hallelujah. But I heard in the spirit of Lord while he was preaching that, while he was preaching, God said, look, sometime, as I remember, I know I'm a, I'm a truck driver. I drive a truck for over 27 years. And I've seen oversized truckloads driving down the road. And sometimes they use a police escort. <laughs> some, some, Y'all feel that right now? God said, I'm going to give you a spiritual escort. I'm going to make sure that when your blessing come, I'm going to make sure that all the angels, all the angels are going to surround you. I don't think some of y'all caught that. I don't think some of y'all caught that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God said, look, so every devil that's been planning an attack over your life, God said, I'm blocking. I'm blocking it. So what, so what, the, what the police escort does is that it makes sure that everything that would stop the load from coming to move out the way. So therefore, it's just like, it's just like as they're driving through the cities, they're blocking stoplights so that the load can keep on trucking. God said, I'm going to make sure that ain't nothing going to stop. Ain't nothing going to stop. Because as this ministry go past the Charles, you're growing. We're living in the overflow. You remember when I was telling y'all about last week that when you pour water into oil, the oil begins to rise? God said, I am elevating you. I'm elevating you because I'm lifting your oil. Oh my God. God said, I'm elevating you. I'm elevating you. I'm elevating you because we're living in the overflow. And if you don't want a piece of what God is about to give this ministry, God said, because there's a wide load coming this way. There's a wide load coming this way.
because there's going to be some people that ain't going to want they ain't going to want to see the new ministry so God said this load is going to be so big that those people are going to be moved out the way but those people that want to be here is going to be the ones that's going to sustain the test of time hallelujah I'm living somebody say I'm living in the overflow hallelujah so here's what God is doing Pastor Charles everybody stand here everybody stand here everybody stand here that when God anoints you and he blesses you if he hasn't blessed you nothing can flow out of you but when God blesses you out of your what? belly so flow rivers a living water hallelujah so something in your belly something in your belly God said I'm about to cause you to overflow and where it's going to come out at is coming out of your belly hallelujah God said it's about to pour it's pouring out of you Nate it's pouring out of you it's pouring out of you now somebody say let it pour So, I want to do something real quick. I want to do something real quick. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Everybody that came with expectations, I want you to come to this altar. I'm going to pray with you right where you're standing right here. We're about to get up. I need you to come. I need for you to come. I need for you to come. Holy Ghost power. Holy Ghost power. Holy Ghost power. Mm. And one thing you got to understand, real softly, Mr. one thing you got to understand is that a lot of the trucks that I see pulling those oversized loads are Kenworths. And I, I, I like those Kenworths. And some of them are Peterbilts. And you may have some of them Cascaders, but very rarely you'll see the Cascadias and the Volvos pulling those loads. You see a Peterbilt, a Kenworth pulling those loads and these, these trucks got a massive engine in it. And sometimes when you're down in the Pennsylvania area, when you're down there, uh, Virginia, West, uh, West Virginia and uh, Pennsylvania down in the area, there's a lot of hills you gotta climb. And I'm saying this to say this to somebody right now, some of y'all climb on a hill. Some of y'all climbing a hill. And, and the thing is, when you get on the hill, sometimes some trucks can't handle the hill. Because when you're climbing that hill, some of the trucks pull off to the side because they overheat. You got to be, right, that's what you, I'm about to say that. You got to be built to handle the hill. Now, sometimes now you, your truck may be built to handle the hill, but you may be dealing with complications. The complications could be doubt. The complications could be doubt. So the main reason why you didn't make it to the top of the hill is because of doubt. You had to pull off to the side of the road so you can revamp yourself, so you can recalculate, so you can re-download what God wants you to do, what, what he wants to do in your life. So your truck won't get up until you reconnect. Now, I, now I, 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 I've been driving for years, and I believe that to be true. Because I've been going up hills and God had to shut me down. And when God shut me down, I said, Lord, what's wrong? And so when I reconnect to God, God said, try it again. He didn't say give up. He didn't say make a phone call. He didn't say call your friends. He didn't say call the tow truck. God said, try it. Try it again. Because you got to understand that no weapon that's formed because the enemy while you're climbing that hill the enemy may try to form a weapon he may try to form a weapon to try to stop you from going up high blood pressure so you'll start having heart complications but I hear God saying that I created you in my likeness and in my image who can fix you like I can? God said, I can fix what they say is broken. I am real, a restorer of your faith 
if you trust me, going up the hill. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Now, going up the hill is hard. When you're going up a hill with a heavy load, that's hard getting up because now you got to have the right trouble. Now, all my Kenworth, I have a switch for the fan to kick in. And I'll kick my fan in. It'll kick in automatically once it reaches a certain temperature. But if I'm going up a hill with 80,000 pounds, I want to kick my fan in so it can stay cool going all the way to the top. But going up a hill put a lot of stress on your engine, on your life. Because some people say, we've seen the song, I'm going up on the rough side of the mountain. But what about going down? I want to show you something. Now, when you're going down the hill in a big truck, I want to show you something. That when you get to a, a certain grade, and I don't know if you ever tried to travel down to West Virginia or going to Atlanta or whatever, you'll see what they call 4% grade. And sometimes you'll see where there, there, it's, it's a truck, uh, a way station, it's a brake check on the side of the road. So trucks will pull in just to check their brakes. Because there's a hill that sometimes the main reason why a lot of us lie, our lives are out of control is because we're going down with our hidden brakes. We lost our brakes on life. We lost our minds are so out of control that we're going downhill and we're about to crash. So what God is saying, so right when you get to the top of the hill, the, 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 they will say, downshift into a lower gear. See, what we forget, some of us forget to downshift. And what we got, we got a jake brake on, on our truck. Some of us got jake brakes on our trucks. A lot of trucks got them. And if that jake brake ain't working, and if you lose that gear, you're going to go down that hill. If you ever been going down and you've seen a truck with their drums are all red, they done lost their brakes. You need to move out their way. Because if they don't go off to that runaway ramp, God will put a runaway ramp in your way. So that when you know that you're losing control, and you come to your senses, you'll take that ramp. I'm going to show you something. Sometimes we got to take that ramp. Don't be scared. Sometimes you got to take that ramp. Sometimes you got to take that ramp because sometimes some of us, we're going through hell right now and we don't know how we're going to get ourselves out of it. We're going through so much trouble, we don't know what we're going to do, Pastor Charles. Sometimes we got to take that ramp. take that ramp only because God want us to get to the side of the road because we didn't lost control. We got to regather ourselves. We got to regather our marriage. We got to regather our lives. We got to regather our children. We got to regather our family. We got to regather our churches. We got to reestablish a whole lot of stuff. I'm talking to y'all about truck things, but can it, it works with the, it, I'm, I'm trying to help y'all somebody out right now because some of us got a load that God said the main reason why you're so overweight is because it's not because of your size, it's because you're trying to carry everybody else's load. You're trying to carry everybody else's load. So so therefore God said, I'ma sit back and then let you ride in my seat to show you how it feels. Because you are not God. I know I designed you in my likeness and my image, but that weight don't belong to you. That weight don't belong to you. Your sons and your daughters' weight don't belong to you. God said, I created you to pray over them and let me take care of them. Hallelujah. So if I vent with Charles, I'm not venting because I want you to carry my weight. I just need for you to hear me and pray for me and pray that thing off of you because I'm going to tell you something as leaders, as pastors when I pray over you I'm going to be under attack I'm going to be under attack because what I pray off of you is going to latch on to me and if I don't know how to shake it off if I don't know how to shake it off uh, I'm going to carry that thing in my house. It's going to attach itself to my wife. It's going to attach itself to my children. If I don't know how to shake it off. See what I'm saying? So, every once in a while, every once in a while, these big trucks got to go into a, what they call a regen. Because we get so cluttered with stuff in our life. Our minds get so cluttered. The, the exhaust system on the truck is so uh, so sophisticated that it would take all that carbon and it would build up in there and your truck would call for a regen. 
And if you keep driving, the truck will slow down five miles per hour, five, five. And by the time you get to stop, you'll be driving five miles per hour down the road. So God said, you got to go through Regen. So I hear the Lord saying that Regen represents fasting. Represent fasting. I, I, I don't do fasting like everybody else do it. They do it in January, but I'm calling a fast in the month of March. I'm calling a fast in the month of March. Hallelujah, because we all need to be on a fast. We all need to do our things. So calling a fast in the month of March for the church. Hallelujah. So that's what I'm going to let you know what we're going to be doing and what we're going to be praying for. So listen, some regions take 15 minutes, some take 30, some take 45, some take an hour. But we're going to do the whole month. I don't know if it's 31 days or 30 days in the month of March, but we're going to do a 30-day 30, 30, a 30 regenification, 30-day fast. We're going to believe God for change. We're going to believe God for a whole lot of stuff, but I know that God can do it. One more question. What did he say? What, won't God do it? I lift our hands in this place right here. As we're getting ready to go on time. Next month is also Easter. We're going to be doing a whole lot next month. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, I want, I want you to lay your hands on yourself. But where's hope? Where's hope? Where's hope? Where's hope? Come here, hope. Come here, hope. I want you to stand right there. Get up here and stand right there. And I want to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray that the anointing that comes from your throne room will fall afresh on every vessel in this building right now. Herabosha. Lay your hands on your pain. Lay your hands on where it hurts at. Hallelujah. That the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Right now, God, is pulling down strongholds in your life. That father's sickness is being pulled down. Disease, poverty is being pulled down. God, I'm praying for the needs of your people to be met right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm praying that every yoke being broken right now in the name of Jesus. That God, that you are making everything new everything somebody say everything new everything new i pray that god right now that the canker worm and the parma worms are spitting it up right now in the name of jesus somebody say i will live hallelujah thank you jesus that god the things that need to be dead keep them dead but god the things that we know that needs to be living that god that you keep it living that God, you know us from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet, God. I'm asking that God that you will restore right now in the name of Jesus. Oh God, I, I know you the roads are not promised to be easy. But God, I pray that right now that God, that, that, that God as we move forward in the next days that God everything is going to be alright uh, I thank you God because when I climb up that rough side of the mountain God it's going to be alright uh, when I go down the other side uh, I know the downshift uh, and when I'm going down that hill fast in life God I know that there's a runaway ramp I know that there's a hiding place in you Lord that I can hide in you God that I can get out the fast lane and rest in your bosom oh Lord I pray, God, that for the minds of our people. Hallelujah. I pray for the minds of us, oh God. That, God, that some of us, we deal with mental health conditions. We're fighting battles that nobody can even understand. Hallelujah. Mama don't understand it. Spouses don't understand it. But, God, we know that you understand it, God. I pray that, God, hear the most. She can the most. Hear your most. She the most. That God, hallelujah, that you break every yoke of the enemy, every plot and every plan. And God, that you do it right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody say, God, I surrender to you. I surrender to you. 
I surrender to you, O oh Lord. Oh God, I thank you, God. Hallelujah. I hear the Lord saying that there, that God is about to make you over. God is about to make you over. God is about to make you over. That what you want, what you've been wanting, what you've been wanting to establish, the only reason why it's being delayed is because you stop moving. God said, I want to make you over. I want to make what work, what you think couldn't work, work for you in your life. It's going to work for you. It's going to work for you. It looks like it's broken only because that's what you're thinking. That's what the enemy wants you to think that is broken. Come on up here, Mondo. Get next to your wife. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody lift your hands and say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. You need to tell him thank you. You didn't tell them thank you because somebody is about to get a load dumped on them this week. This week a load is about to be dumped in your lap. Hallelujah. God said you got to be ready for that thing. Keep your garage door open. Keep your light on so they can see your address. God said it's coming your way. Hear your voice, Tata. Hear your voice, Tata. That I will see. My God, my God, my God. Hallelujah. Listen here, Wayne. The enemy tried to stop your career, but the devil is a liar. Somebody say, the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So, as we're standing on this altar, if you believe that God has, is meeting your need, lift those hands right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And because you believe that, why don't you put a praise on that thing? I know it's not a million of us in here, but we can make a lot of noise in that. Come on, put a praise on it. I've been through too much hell, but I'm going to put a praise on it. I'm going to put a praise on it. So, so we put that praise on it. And listen, Pastor, you're Nathan, right? The Bible says that he inhabits the praises of Israel. So to inhabit is to dwell. You hear me? You hear me, Lane? To inhabit is to dwell. Hallelujah. Joanne, you hear me? Joyce, you hear me? You hear me? You hear me? You hear me? You hear me, honey? To inhabit is to do well. So when we praise God, we cause him to do well. Woo. So that, so that when sickness come, all I got to do is put a praise on it. All I got to do is put a praise on it. When my money is funny and my change is strange, all I got to do is put a praise on it. I don't know y'all's story, but I know that the rest of this week, I don't care what you go through, what you deal with, put a praise on it. Put a praise on it. Next time the enemy try to knock you down, put a praise on it. Hallelujah. So when you fall down, you say, oh, hallelujah. I want you to show the gym that God can still do it. When you make that dunk, the next time you get your leg together and you dunk that like God did it, just give God a praise. Hallelujah. You just let him know that, oh, thank you, Jesus. What the enemy meant for evil, God meant it for your good. That's your good leg, ain't it? That's your hopping leg, ain't it? Look at, look at, look at. See, that's what the enemy did. He tried to form a weapon against you. He tried to form a weapon against you to stop you, to knock your confidence down. Hallelujah. But stand up, stand up, stand up. Look at him. Still a young man. For this is the confidence. that we have in him that if we ask anything listen 
Whatever you ask God for right now, I want you to ask him for it. Right now, speak it. What you want to be. I don't know what you want to be. Speak what you want to be, Wayne. With authority. stuff you want to be? Huh? Hallelujah. Well, what's one thing you love to do right now when you're young? Play basketball. Say it. Say it loud. Say it loud. Say it loud. You spoke it. Said this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything. So what you want is to play basketball right now? God, give me the oil. Let me see the oil. What the oil? Give me some oil. I'm going to show you something. That in the name of Jesus, Hashatadabosi, they're going to call you Mr. Incredible. Watch. Because your dad got it on video. You know what happened to you. You know the enemy tried to stop you. But yet, this leg is going to be incredible. Lift your hands. 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 And if y'all believe that God has did it for you, just give God a great big praise and say hallelujah. Listen, hope. Hope. Want to pray with you? Want to pray with you? Want to pray over you? I want to pray over you. Hallelujah. Y'all can take y'all seat if y'all got to take a seat. That's fine. Hallelujah. Come here, April. Come here, Mama. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Going to anoint you. And we're going to believe God. Let me anoint your hands too. Come on. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
Shata. I hear chains falling. Chains falling. He shot under Bosi. We break it right now in the name of Jesus. See, listen, listen. You're not dealing with it alone. You're not dealing with it alone. A lot of us, we deal with mental health and we try to keep it to ourselves. A lot of us deal with spiritual uh, suicide. The enemy is trying to annihilate you when you're trying to keep it to yourself. But God said, there's help. There's help. There's help. There's help in the Lord. That when the thought comes to your mind, call on the name of Jesus. Because what the enemy is trying to do, he's trying to form a weapon. He's trying to form a weapon that gives you to yourself. But when you take control by calling on the name of Jesus and seeking help, God said he put resources out there. He put help out there that you can save yourself from that situation. How, I'm not saying that prayer does not work. But God created everything. He created everything, right? Everything. And a lot of us are not trying to get the help we need. We're trying to help ourselves by what? Smoking weed, doing things ourselves, doing other kind of drugs, trying to do things to try to cover ourselves. Only thing that drink it away, the only thing that does, it causes it to worsen. To worsen. That will not help you. You got to get help. You got to get help. If the drugs work for you temporary, I need some permanent hookup. I need something that's going to work. I need something that's going to get the drugs out of my mind. I'm going to need something to get the alcohol out of my mind. I need something that's going to work. That's going to work. Hallelujah. I need something that's going to work. I don't need something that's not going to work. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because you'll let it ride and all of a sudden you get to a point where we're having your funeral, we're speaking over your body and all you have to do is just say, help. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray with you and I'm also going to tell you to go seek medical help. That's, what, that, that's my responsibility. Hallelujah. Because the thing is, I know when you need mental medical help. Hallelujah. Because when your mind is all over the place, when your mind is all over the place, husband can't always, heaven can't help you. He can, he can comfort you. Mama can comfort you. But mama needs to have sense enough to say, you know what, you need to go to the doctor. You need to go to the doctor because it's deeper. It's deeper. It's in the mind. It's in the mind. You got to understand it's in the mind. It's in the mind. And I'm not afraid as a leader to say, go to the doctor. Go to the doctor. I can, be your, I can be your pastor counselor, marriage counselor, counselor, counselor. But when it becomes deeper, deeper, I need to say, you know what? I, I know a doctor that you need to go see. And I'm going to escort you to this doctor so you can get the help. And so that's me. Because one thing we got to understand as a church, I can call you up here all day long and pray for you all day long carry over you and you'll be good for a week it's like the bible said that spirit leaves for seven days and come back with seven more buddies amen so therefore focus on your mental health also your mental health your mental health and I was telling my wife today I said we need to talk about mental health more often because a lot of a lot of us, we can be saved spiritually, mentally, physically, even financially, if our mental health is messed up. Some of us, when we some of us, when we begin to lose it, we begin to spend money, money that we don't even got. Mental health condition. You see what I'm saying? You want to spend money. You just want to go shopping. That's your medicine. It may not be drugs, but your medicine can be just be shopping. But if that's condition in your life, seek medical help. 
I know a few doctors that can help you out. I can recommend and send you to them. God will work that thing out to you. Hallelujah. Even, even, it, it does not matter who you are, what you are. You need to seek it. You need to seek it. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. God created you and God said, I'm going to help you in every area that he possibly can. Amen. Come on, lift your hand and say, Amen, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Amen. Hallelujah. I want to thank God for Dante's healing. Amen. the Lord. Listen, we're finna get ready to go. Hallelujah. We got our sister church coming in in just a little bit. Amen. Uh, let's stand to our feet all over the building. Musicians, I want to talk to you all just for a little bit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. 